I would, uh, without any further ado, uh, invite our first speaker, Dr. Saeed Ali from Kazakhstan, and he will be uh, speaking on integration process in Central Asia, implications for India. Just a little introduction about our honorable panelist who's here. Uh, you are Sayat Ali? Yes. Because there is some confusion in this thing. Yes, I am He Sayat comes Ali. from wonderful land of Kazakhstan. And Kazakhstan is a very important nation for us. It's a nation which is the largest in Central Asia, in a way. It's got resources of Baikonur Cosmodrome, there are freshwater lakes, things which cannot happen anywhere in the world, sonar trials and all happen in Kazakhstan. Rich in energy, uh, very relevant for us. Actually, I must confess, uh, in India, we, in army, we do MPhil projects. And somewhere, all my MPhil projects were based on Central Asia. So by default, I have been caught today to sort of be with these Central Asians. So, sir, please uh, remember that this is just before lunch session. So, every uh, extra minute that you take, you'll be denying. I will not take. Yes, extra sir. Minute. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sayyid Ali. Uh, actually, I am named after the great Ottoman admiral who lived in the 16th century and defended uh, the India against the Portuguese colonization. Unfortunately, he lost his uh, navy and uh, went back to Istanbul through the land, and he wrote his memoir called uh, Mir Atul Memalik, which is the uh, mirrors of the countries, which is very great source for the 16th century um, India. Let's uh, um, may God have uh, mercy on his soul and uh, very grateful for him to uh, delay at least the colonization of uh, India. Okay, uh, <clears throat> my topic is uh, integration processes in Central Asia and implications for India. There have been uh, uh, no integration, local integration in the Central Asia. Asia without uh, great powers involved. And recently, like uh, two decades or so, there have been uh, three uh, main integration processes in Central Asia. First one is Eurasian Economic Union, uh, became a union in 2015, Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Armenia. The logic behind is to establish a power around Russia to balance uh, Western powers. Second was that uh, the US led the new Silk Road Initiative, initiated in 2011, and the third one that the Chinese led, the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, Eurasian Economic uh, <coughs> Union has been in crisis, crisis uh, uh, recently that uh, no new members since 2015. Uh, Tajikistan didn't join, uh, was very highly expected. Uzbekistan was, has been flirting but didn't uh, join and Turkmenistan outright rejected. Uh, and uh, especially Russia's ability to make good on um, economic commitments in the region is, uh, has been increasingly in doubt, especially after the Ukrainian war. And the, uh, Russia be had backed out of financing uh, many projects such as Kyrgyzstan's large-scale hydropower projects that called the uh, Upper Narin uh, Dam. And the second was the U.S. support of uh, supported new Silk Road uh, initiative. Uh, this uh, was the first 
envisioned in 2011 as a means for Afghanistan to integrate further into the Central Asia, Pakistan, India, and beyond. Uh, how serious was the United States compared to BRI? U.S. commitment in terms of money has been minimal. Um, minimal funding vehicles such as World Bank compared to Chinese uh, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and Silk Road fa Fund. U.S. New, uh, New Silk Road was more like a vision ra rather than a policy and coincided with the regional withdrawal of the United States. Basically, this project was dead on arrival. And we all know about the Belt and Road Initiative and started in 2013 in Kazakhstan. Uh, and this is a, a big project of pipelines, infrastructures, and economic development linking China with the Western Europe through Central Asia. And BRI has been uh, developing fast. Uh, more than 100 countries now involved. It looks similar to U.S. Marshall Plan to build uh, Europe. And it is a big um, money be, uh, behind, behind the project that uh, China has been really committed through Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and Silk Road Fund. And this is the um, biggest railway ch um, tunnel in, uh, um, in central in Uzbekistan, built by China. It's one of the projects, and this is a free trade zone in Kazakhstan and China. Uh, when we compare these two, uh, Eurasian Economic Union and uh, BRI, um, that... Uh, Eurasian Economic Union is a real integration project following the example of EU, while BRI is not a clear what it has been yet, but um, it is a, more like a bilateral agreements between China and other Central Asian states. Eurasian Economic Union is institutionalized uh, while BRI uh, is not. And uh, um, like Uzbekistan and Tajikistan stated that they will, uh, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan stated they would never join, and Tajikistan hasn't joined. Let's move on to uh, next topic: that uh, how India is in uh, in this equation, uh, how powerful state uh, deals with the region building. Powerful states that usually initiate regionalism to promote their economic and political interests, such as the uh, United States' role in the creation of uh, EU and ASEAN. Similarly, Russia, China, and South Africa engage in uh, region building. However, not all powerful states are willing to act as a hegemon and engage in region, region building, such as India, which has not developed a vision for how to create stability in the conflict region. Uh, ridden region. And I India, of course, it is considered as one of the rising powers in international relations and the candidate for future uh, proactive in creating regionalism, as in seen in the Chinese-led Belt and Road Pro Initiative. How do we explain this uh, puzzle that India's hes hesitance of involving region building? Um, Remember that the India was invited uh, to ASEAN at the beginning of that, and the India rejected. And which international relations theory best explain the behavior of uh, India? I hypothesize that the liberalism and constructivism fit to explain the behavior of India. In terms of constructivism, Indian identity shaped by long colonialism and struggle for independence and by establishing non-alignment movement during the Cold War, prevents India to take much active role beyond its border. Overconscientious about its sovereignty, India doesn't want to be bound by any regional organization. In terms of liberalism, the protectionist policies caused by domestic structure of uh, protect, protective industry hinders India's uh, regionalism efforts. However, seeing other regionalism efforts around India, takes, India takes timid steps towards regionalization. And this came um, in uh, last year, in January, around this time, that uh, 
uh, India started initiative uh, with Central Asia um, that uh, Prime Minister Modi had the first ever India Central Asian Summit and with all five Central Asian presidents. Uh, but this meet meeting was a virtual. It was online meeting and it is a um, part of the India's extended neighborhood policy, which calls to New Delhi to di diversify its geological uh, partners and diplomatic goals, and it is willingness to engage in it is Central Asian partners on the multitude of uh, fronts. India's uh, concern in the regionalism is uh, security oriented, and uh, December last year that uh, uh, national security advisors of five countries and India got together, and their uh, um, concerns was more like uh, shared common interests, such as stabilizing the security situation in Afghanistan and reinforcing territorial uh, integrity. There are some uh, regional organizations that both India and um, uh, Central Asian states uh, are member of them. Uh, we all know ab about the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which India became a uh, full member in 2017. Um, and this is uh, the aim of uh, India hopes that this will stabilize the Central Asia and Afghanistan and ease tension with China and Pakistan. And the second one is the SICA, that is Conference on Interaction and Confidence, confidence Building Measures in Asia which initiated by Kazakhstan at the uh, independence. India was involved from the start. Um, and this is a big organization that kind of uh, uh, mimics the OSCE. Uh, SARC, Gulf Cooperation Council, China, Russia, Turkey, Vietnam, Mongolia, and Israel are um, uh, members of this uh, organization. Indians' concern in this organization is that mainly terrorism, including nuclear terrorism, the global financial crisis, climate change, and the situation in the Middle East. And the third one is that the India's uh, uh, relations uh, with the uh, Eurasian Economic Union, uh, the trade agreement, free trade agreement has been negotiated. India's hope that access to natural resources and EU Eurasian Economic Union market um, and when the North-South Corridor uh, actualized that uh, will uh, decrease the uh, distance and the transaction cost of trade uh, significantly. Since Russia and India have good relations, the ties between India and economic, Euro Eurasian Economic Union will develop further. Finally, I would like to mention the make a SWOT analysis of uh, the regionalism between um, India and the, uh, Central Asia, that the strength is that uh, high soft power in Central Asia compared to China, no xenophobia against the India or Indians um, because of the Soviet history and the movies, um, and the willingness of Central Asian countries to balance China and Russia, willingness of India, relative proximity, and Indian know-how and Central Asian natural resources. Of course, there are weaknesses is that India doesn't have enough finance to match Chinese deep pocket, low direct and safe land and rail connections, and low people-to-people -people connections, visa limitations. Um, and these are all the weaknesses of the, there are some opportunities, of course, that maybe through uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization and SICA that uh, Increasing trade with the Central Asian countries through North-South Corridor and maybe TAPI will uh, um, actualize. Of course, there are threats to this um, regionalization project of India to Central Asia that uh, unstable Afghanistan, hostility with Pakistan and hostility with China, new Cold War, that uh, this might force India to join the Western camp because of rivalry with uh, China, this is the example of this that uh, is called the Quad, that uh, security dialogue between India, Australia, Japan, and the United States uh, against uh, China. As a conclusion that I would like to suggest um, that first India should uh, uh, really work on the security issues uh, 
And this uh, wonderful philosophy that mentioned uh, um, for two days of uh, in ancient Indian philosophy should be reflected in international relations and solve uh, or ease all this tension between uh, Pakistan and China and other countries. And that's the only way that India will uh, grow north ways. And India must forge links with this dynamic region via transit, trade, investment, and people-to-people -people connections in order to cement New Delhi as a reliable and long-lasting partner in Central Asia amid uh, geopolitical challenges. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Sayyad Ali. Now, we'll be having the next panelist, which is going to be Professor H.A. Nazmi who's going to be telling us about a country which has changed its name recently. It is not Turkey, it is Turkey. It is spelled also in a different way. And I have made a request to him that there is a missing Central Asian nation which lives in a mode which 